Shalom, everybody. Rabbi Edelstein here with this week's installment of Rabbi E in 3, brought to you as always by Moor DC. I want to focus with you on a very important character trait, or midah in Hebrew, that's illustrated in this week's Torah portion. And then I want to take a look at myself as an example and see if I'm living up to that character trait. We're putting Rabbi E in the hot seat and under the microscope, but all for a good cause spiritual elevation and spiritual growth. I'm ready. You ready? The Torah portion is Bih Aloscha, third Torah portion in the fourth book of the Torah, Bamidbar. Many topics covered here, very deep, profound, loaded Torah portion. We have the Jewish people beginning their journey in the Midbar, in the desert, which will continue for the rest of the Torah. But I want to focus on the character of our great leader and prophet, Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, the greatest prophet of all time. What trait, if you remember, is often associated with Moshe? humility. And here it's explicit in this Torah portion. The Torah says, Ve'ish Moshe anav mi'od mikol ha'adam asher al-panei ha'adama. And the man Moshe was very humble, anav ma'od, more than any person on the face of the earth. So we want to talk about one of the dis- one of the incidents that shows his humility in this week's Torah portion. I have to break it to you. The Jewish people complain in this week's Torah portion. We don't always complain, either in the past or the present. No, but sometimes we do. And we were being led at a fast pace through the desert because Hashem wanted to take us into the land of Israel. And we complained about the pace of the journey and about the diet, the holy sacred manna that we were eating. But whatever, we complained about it. Moshe turns to Hashem and says, I can't leave these people alone. And Hashem says, okay, so you're going to choose 70 people, elders, who will, who will lead with you, who will assist you in the sacred task of leading and elevating and educating the Jewish people. And that's the forerunner of the Sanhedrin, the Jewish Supreme Court, which would sit in the Beit HaMikdash when we had a temple. So 70 elders are chosen and the spirit of prophecy of Nevuah comes upon them. Now, two of them called Eldad and Medad begin to prophesy and they're apart from the other ones. The details are not as important now, but Moshe's main disciple, Joshua, Yehoshua, gets offended for Moshe's honor when he hears Eldad and Medad prophesying, and he rushes to Moshe. Again, the details are not so important as the reaction is. Joshua says, investigate them, see what they're doing. Moshe said to him, to Joshua, his main disciple, are you being zealous for my sake? Would that the entire people of Hashem could be prophets, if only Hashem would place his spirit upon them. Joshua was uh, was concerned for Moshe's honor, as if, so to speak, they were stealing the spotlight. And what did Moshe say? I want everyone to be elevated to my level. I wish Hashem would make everyone on the level of my prophecy. That's one definition of humility. You're aware of your gifts, but you don't look down on someone else. You actually want your fellow man to be lifted up to the same level or an approximate level. You have good things, you acknowledge that, but you want other people to have good things too. That's one of the marks of humility. Rabbi E. In three, yes, I'm a humble guy, right? But what if right now some knocked on the door and said, Rabbi E, there's a great thing. I want you to watch Rabbi Nate in eight. It's another video. Oh, yeah? How many likes is it getting? A lot. Okay, uh, I'll, t- I'll check it out. Oh, yes, I'm very happy. Rabbi Nate in eight. How about Rabbi Gene in 13? Another one? There's a Rabbi Gene in 13? But I'm Rabbi E in... Th- so you see where I'm getting at? It gets a little touchy here. Do I want people to spread Torah wisdom? Of course I do. But do I want it so much that I'll rejoice at Rabbi Nate in eight? I should be at that level. Am I at that level of Moshe's humility? I'm working on it. Let's work on it together. We should want what's good for us and for our fellow man. Have a wonderful Shabbos. Rabbi Ian three. Start with that.